Are you in a band? Or maybe you work for a band. Or maybe you're going to be working for a band for the first time very soon. Well, if the answer to any of those questions is yes, and even if you're just a fan that's curious how this stuff works for your favorite bands, this might be the video for you. Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Tank, and today I'm going to be taking my knowledge from doing merchandise in the touring music industry, and I'm going to be showing you one of the merch spreadsheets that I used to use on the road. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to fill everything in step by step, and how to settle an actual show. And hopefully this will help you to make sure that you're not paying more than you actually should when you have to pay merchandise fees at shows. Now, a couple quick things before we start, because this is probably gonna be a longer video. I mean, I'm in my captain's chair. I'm getting comfortable. There's a lot of stuff to cover in this, but I'm sure that there's some people out there that are probably seeing my channel for the first time and are asking, who is this guy? I mean, what does he know about this and why should we listen? Well, uh, just a quick rundown. For the last 15 years, I've been working in the touring music industry full time. And most recently I've been a guitar tech, but I've also done bass and drum teching, production assistant work, tour management work, lighting, pyro, tons of stuff. But for the first half of my touring career, I was a merchandise manager. And I started out with small club bands where oftentimes I was the only person that they had on the road with them. And I worked my way up to theater tours and arenas and amphitheaters and stadiums. So everything that we're gonna be discussing in this video is from the years of experience that I have doing merchandise. And the other quick thing I want to mention before we start is that the spreadsheet that we're going to be using today is an Excel spreadsheet that I made about eight years ago when I was doing some one-offs with a band. And it is a decent template for settling merch and setting up an inventory and stuff like that. It's probably more appropriate for club size bands, but if you want to use it to make your own, if you are a merchandise manager or you're in a band, Feel free to, because I'm going to include a link to download this entire Excel spreadsheet in the description of this video. And I've said many times on my channel before, I just want bands to be knowledgeable about how stuff works. And there are so many bands out there that some of them may learn something today. If you didn't, sorry for wasting your time, but I hope this helps in some way because... I'm not going to lie. This is something that some people charge for. And I'm not trying to sound cool or to try to sound like a martyr or anything or like give myself a pat on the back because I'm not charging. But I have been contracted to make spreadsheets like this in the past. And I've been paid for this work, but I just want people to have it. So if you want to download it and follow along and maybe, you know, type in your own stuff as we go, go for it. The link is in the description, but let's get started. All right, so we've got our blank merchandise sheet. And if you can see on the bottom here, there's an overview tab, and then there's a bunch of other tabs. Each one of these is a separate settlement sheet. So if I click one, there's a sheet. If I click two, there's a sheet. There are 31 of those on the bottom. And the reason I do that is because there are at most 31 days in a month, and each one of these can handle a whole month. So when I'm on tour, if it's multiple months, I'll save them as different files. So this one we can say is going to be January. So you've got 31 days to cover. And then once you get to February, you can start a new one of these files and set it up again. But on our main overview page here, we have a lot of stuff to type in and it will auto populate on other parts of this sheet. So under band, we can insert our name. We'll just put, I don't know, let's call ourselves death hammer. Why not? I don't know if that's an actual band, but it'd be funny if it was, you can see, I type in death hammer. And then if I go to our settlement sheet, boom, the name is already there. It's great. A lot of this auto populates. There's not stuff that you have to move around. Merch manager, if you type your name in, we'll just put tank since I'm the one doing it. Go to your sheet, boom, auto fills for you. Again, there's going to be a lot of things that fill in. Um, let's finish this off. Again, we said it's going to be January. It's going to be 2023. And every time you do a settlement sheet, these are all going to auto populate for you. So by the time you get to an end of the month, it's going to have all your dates in the column. It's going to have the city and state you were in, the gross sales, the per head, everything. And then on the bottom, it will tell you the totals of everything for the month, your gross sales, how much taxes you've paid. And then by the end, it'll show you your actual profit if you've built in your cost of goods, which I also have done on this sheet as well. 
But now we're going to move into our first merchandise settlement of a tour, really, or the first of the month. And as you can see, our band name has filled in, the merchandise manager has filled in, and there's some other things that you can fill in as well. So slot type, not necessary you fill it in, but I like to know when I'm doing tours, is it a headliner? Are you an opener? You can fill all that in. So for the sake of this, we'll just type in headliner and then venue type. Are you doing a club? Are you doing an arena? Just for this, we'll put club and then you've got your capacity number. So let's say you're at a, a venue that has a 1000 person capacity and the ticket sales, let's for the sake of just showing you how this works, let's not do sold out. Let's do 871 people have showed up to your show. Well, you've got an auto populate there. It tells you it was 87% full. That's how many people attended. Moving up to the date, we'll just put January 1st, 2000. And actually, if I remember the sheet right, it's been a while. Sorry, we have to do it like this. Because when you go back to your overview, boom, your date has filled in right there. So always use it numeric like that. City and state, let's just say we're in Chicago, Illinois. Venue, let's just pick a 1000 capacity venue in Chicago. Let's go Metro. We're playing at the Metro. Metro is more than that, but. So right here, more specifics. Company, are you working for a company? Or is a different company vending your show? Because we all know that sometimes the band's merchandise manager vends the actual show, or sometimes the venue themselves will vend. If you're selling, you're working for a band and you're selling, just type in the band's name. If the venue is selling, type in the venue's name or a third party company that they have. For this settlement, let's just say the band is selling, so we'll put Death Hammer in there. Uh, if a venue is selling, they might have different stands. They might have different locations. They might have multiples. For the sake of this one, we're just going to put one and we're going to pretend that it's just me vending, nobody else. Actually, for the sake of showing you how this works, let's do two vendors. There were two people, me and somebody else that helped out. Bootleg. This is usually only for bigger shows. You ever gone to a concert and you see somebody in the parking lot at an arena selling tour t-shirts for like 10 bucks and you're like, damn, that's a good deal. Those are not official t-shirts. Those are people that have printed their own shirts and travel show to show just trying to make money. And sometimes on bigger shows, there will be bootleg security. We will hire off-duty police officers to go around the parking lots and shut down those bootleg sellers. Just for the sake of the settlement, I'm going to say there was no bootleg, so we'll ignore all that, but I'll explain as we get there. Now, since this is a brand new sheet, we're going to have to put in some products and I'll show you how and why this is set up the way it was. Under the product names, we've got different areas. We've got merchandise, soft goods, that's usually wearables. And then we've got non-clothing, which is usually your stuff like posters or keychains and stuff like that. And then you've got music. Now, the reason that those are all broken down separately is because some show contracts have different fees for those things. They also have different taxes on different things in certain areas of the country. But let's just start up at the top and we'll just type in a couple products. Let's say we have a tour tee, right? Well, there's five spaces here. And the reason that I do that is because different sizes, you're going to have different inventory numbers for different sizes. So we'll go, you know, we'll start it small. And I usually lay it out like this. I put S and then we'll go tour T and then we'll do the same thing as we go down for every single size that we're going to have on the tour. Now you might have bigger sizes. And that's fine. You can use different lines if you'd like to use this sheet and change the colors like this. I mean, I gray these out so it's easier to look at, but you could easily go to no fill and then add another size if you want to do that. Like if you have a triple X or something like that. But for this sheet, we're just going to go um, small through 2X. Sorry, I already messed up my uh, tour T. We're just going to go small to double X. And there we've got our t-shirt and I'll throw another item in there with different pricing. We'll say hoodie. So for this settlement, we're going to have two things. We're going to have a tour tee. We're going to have a tour hoodie. We've got small through double XL on every single one of them. Let's go down to our non-clothing merchandise. And let's just say we have a tour poster and let's say, I don't know, a bandana and I don't know, a keychain. We'll do that as well. 
And then under music, let's say we've got, you know, a CD. What's the name of the Death Hammer CD? We'll just go Total Destruction. I know we're getting really dumb today. So Total Destruction CD. So those are going to be our items for this settlement. Now, the next thing we want to do on this, and I guess you don't have to do this, but I like to do it because it helps you know how much money you're actually making. See where it says COGS price. That's actually cost of goods price. A lot of times I like to find out how much it costs to manufacture all of these items so that I can take these numbers out so bands have a better idea of knowing what they're actually making in profit. So we'll round off some numbers and we'll just do some guessing. Most t-shirts you're looking at like six bucks to produce, but once you start getting to double XL and triple XL and stuff like that, the price goes up. So we'll put $8 for the double X's. A hoodie is going to cost more. We'll say $18 for manufacturing on the regular sizes and then 22 for um, a double XL. And we're going to do the same. Let's say a tour poster costs $2 to make a bandana. We'll say cost $3 and a keychain costs one. And then the cost to make the CD, let's say, is going to be $4. These are just for the sake of whatever. Then you're going to want in to put in your sale prices. So let's say we're charging $25 for t-shirts. A lot of times bands will actually upcharge the double XLs because the cost of goods is higher. So we will do that for this sheet. If I'm selling a t-shirt for 25, I would normally usually do $5 more on the bigger sizes. And then for hoodies, let's go 55 on the normal sizes. And then we'll do 60 for the other ones. For our tour poster, let's sell it for 10 bucks for our bandana. I don't know. Let's sell it for another 10 since cost of goods is three. And then for our keychain, let's go five CD. Let's sell for 10. And then we've got our prices and our cost of goods mixed in. So now you're at the point in a show where you're going to have your inventory start. Now this is full inventory, like full inventory that's in your truck or in your bus bay or in your trailer or whatever. So usually when you're starting a tour, you're going to have even numbers. So let's just say we have 72 of every single size of all of our, you know, t-shirts and hoodies, uh, for a tour poster, let's say we're going to have 500 of them bandana. Let's go another 500 keychain. Let's go 250. and then total destruction CD. Let's say we're going to carry a thousand of those on the road with us. Those are your starting inventory numbers from a tour. And every day you're going to repopulate those because you're going to sell items. And you can see over on this side where it says inventory end, we've got what we're going to have at the end of the night and it will take out sales. So let's get ready for our show now. Let's count in merchandise. Let's just say again, for the sake of numbers, we're going to count in 12 of each size of our tour hoodie and tour tee. Now you can already see these numbers auto populating. Right now, since we don't have a count out, according to this, we've sold everything. But according to our sale price and how many we have in, it has our gross sales number right there. And you can see if we don't count those back in, it's taken it out of our inventory. So this is going to work pretty well once you see how this gets going. So let's go down here and say we counted in 100 tour posters. We counted in 100 bandanas and 50 keychains, And we brought in 100 of our band's CDs. So right now, if we were to sell out of everything we brought into this show, our total gross sales would be $8,170. But we'll skip all of this stuff on the bottom for now, and we'll just go up here. Now, there are a few columns I want to talk about in this. The first column is ad. Let's say during the show, you notice that you're running low on a certain size, and you're like, damn, I need to run out and grab more sizes from our trailer. Well, when you do that, you can easily just add. So let's say you grab a dozen more mediums and a dozen more larges of your tour tee. All you got to do is type in 12 into the ads on each of those columns. And then you, let's do the same for the hoodies just for numbers. So we've added 12 of those. And let's say at some point during the night, we had to add 50 CDs and maybe 50 more bandanas. So now everything is re-auto populated. So if we sold out of everything, we'd be at $11,000. The next column that we have are for comps. If some other band on the tour is really cool and you want to give them a free shirt, you can do that. And this column will automatically take it out of your inventory. So let's say you comp a large tour tee to a fellow band that's on tour with you. You can put that number in there 
and it's going to take it out of your inventory. Now, the most important thing about that though, is that when you comp, you usually do it from the inventory that's in your trailer. Because if you notice when I put that comp in there, it didn't take it out of what was in the show counts. So if you do comp something from your inventory that's in the show, you're actually going to want to take that out of your ads or your inventory as well. I hope that makes sense the best way I described that. But normally what I would do on a show is if a band wanted a t-shirt, I would mark down the comp, but I would take it out of the stock that's in the trailer and not from what's at the actual show. So I'll just put a comp in there just so you can see how that works for inventory. And then the next thing we have is half sales and crew sales. Now I will admit, not a lot of bands do this. This is more of a company thing. Um, half sales are exactly what they sound like. Like you don't want to fully comp an item to somebody, but you want to give them a discount. Maybe somebody, a fan at your merch table has bought a shitload of stuff and you want to give it to them at half off. You can do that as well. So let's just go to our extra large tour tee. Let's say you made a half sale. Boom. Again, keep in mind that is coming out of your trailer, not this. Crew sale is a similar concept, but it's a cost of goods thing. That usually is for people working at a venue. And again, this is a company thing. They don't want to just give things away. Sorry, car driving by my house is very loud. Uh, they don't want to just give things away. They want, you know, they don't want to lose money. So if you're going to do a crew sale, that's basically a cost of goods price. So if somebody at the venue wanted to buy a shirt, be like, hey, I'll do you a crew sale. And that would be $6 on this price. So you can hit that. Boom. Comes out of your inventory again. But let's move down here. We see how everything's set up. We've got our numbers in, stuff like that. Now let's get to the end of the night. You're counting out. You're counting out your show. What that is going to be is, I mean, most merchandise managers that are watching this know what a count out is. You're counting how much is left at the end of the night. And that's going to give you your accurate number of what you've sold. So let's just type in random numbers here just so we have outs. So we've got left three smalls left, two mediums, three larges, four extra larges, and six double X's on that. And let's just do the same thing on the hoodies just, you know, because, um, and then tour posters, we had a hundred in, let's say we got, let's say we sold out of those bands. Awesome. They sold all the tour posters. We counted in 150 bandanas. Let's say we've only got 12 left. Then out of the 50 keychains, we've got 30 left. And out of all the CDs, we had 150 to start. Let's say we got 32 left. So those are your out numbers. And again, your ending inventory has automatically populated your gross sales right here have automatically populated to tell you how much of each item you've sold. There's even a column for the percentage of sales. So, you know, like what's selling really well, like, Hey, look, that's a high number. Our medium tour hoodies are selling very well on this tour. Maybe we should, you know, look into restocking those if we need to. So now at this point, you've got all your ins and outs numbers and all that stuff. So we're going to go down to our show settlement. Actually, I don't want to do this off of a solid number like $9,000 because that's just too perfect. So let's change a couple of these out numbers really quick and yeah, we'll get a, we'll get a different number. Um, so you come down, it's time to settle out the show. You come down, you got your numbers, whether you counted them yourself or you counted out with the venue, you've got your numbers. Your total gross sales should be $9,230. Now, all the boxes you see in this area that have the kind of yellowish tint to it are all places that you're going to be inputting numbers. So I'm going to actually look up accurate numbers for this just for the sake of it. We said our show is in Chicago, Illinois. So let me look up the clothing tax in Chicago, Illinois, or see if they have a non-clothing tax as well. So give me one second. 12 seconds later. Okay. According to a quick Google search, the current sales tax in Illinois for everything is 6.25. So you can input that in there or input that in there. Now there is no separate clothing or non-clothing tax in Illinois. So it's still going to be 6.25 all across the board on everything. And then the numbers that auto populate there are telling you how much you're paying in taxes off of your gross sales. So out of our $9,230 from our gross sales, 
we have paid $542.94 in taxes. So our gross after tax is $8,687.06. Now, this is the most important part. If nobody has been, been paying attention at all, bands, merchandise managers, whatever, this is the part you need to listen to. A lot of venues will tell you that you have to pay a venue fee off of your gross sales number. That is incorrect. Unless it's in your contract that you're paying on gross sales, which is a horrible show deal if your booking agent signed off on that, you are going to be paying on adjusted gross sales after fees are taken out, taxes and credit card fees, which we're going to be doing in a second. You never want to pay tax or you never want to pay a merchandise fee on a gross number because eventually you're going to be paying taxes on that because you sold it. And if you're paying a merchandise fee on the adjusted gross, you're, you're basically giving money away. So let's go down to our next part. Uh, there's two different lines here. There's a vendor credit card total and a band credit card total. S the vendor means somebody else did the show. So the venue sold for you. But because we already input that we are selling for our band, that's going to be our credit card machine that we used. Now, let's say we did... I don't know, out of that $9,230, let's say we did $5,680 in uh, credit card numbers. So, you know, $5,680 was run through the card machine. The rest was cash. That tells us right there, it'll auto-populate and say 61.5% of our sales were credit cards, not cash. But with credit card machines, there's always a fee. So let's just pretend that our credit card fee on our machine is 4%. That's going to mean that out of that $5,680 that you made on your credit card machine, $227.20 of that is going to be paid in fees to the bank, to the credit card company. So you don't want to pay a merchandise fee on that either because, again, you're just giving away free money. So our adjusted gross sales after taking out tax and credit card fees from the show is going to be $8,459.86. Now we get down to our merch fee, music fee, and vendor fee. The merch fee is that number that you're giving to the venue on merchandise, non-music, soft goods. A lot of merchandise contracts are split between soft goods, which is usually wearables and non-wearables, and music, which is going to be a different rate. So let's say our merch fee for this one was 20% and our music fee was 10%. So that means that you're going to be paying out $1,515.29 to the venue on your merchandise and another $111.06 uh, to the venue for your uh, music sales. Now, this last line here is an optional thing where it says vendor fee percentage. Some bands will give their merchandise managers a percentage, like a commission of the sales, if they're selling themselves. Oftentimes, this will be for if they have to hire another person to do sales with them. And oftentimes, it's just, you know, an incentive for them to try and sell more and do a good job. Now, let's say I do have a vendor fee on this tour. Usually vendor fees are no higher than 5%. So we'll go 5%. That means that $422.99 would go to whoever vended that show for that band that night, which was me and another person. As we input earlier, I put we had two vendors because this was going to be a busy show. Now, that means out of that $422.99, that means I really the logical thing to do is split that 50 50 because you and the person you hired did the most work. If they did a really, really kick-ass job and I'm already getting paid well, I might give them more than that. But if you like split it 60, 40 or something, but if you split that down the middle, that total comes to $211 and 50 cents. Well, 49 cents. So that's what you made as a bonus. If you're the merch person, or if you you know, were hired to help your friends sell merch. That's what you made for working that night. Now, our, our next few lines, we're going to have our show net sales, which is $6,410.51. That is the number that the band made that night after 
paying all the fees, the tax, the credit card fee, and paying the venue. So essentially, the band made that much money tonight, but we're going to get into some other parts where I have taken out the cost of goods in this sheet to show bands what they've actually really made after spending the money on the products. But let's stick right here for now. So if I wasn't vending this show, there's a line here that says check to be sent. Oftentimes this happens at arenas and amphitheaters with third party vendors. They are going to send your merchandise company or your band a check in the mail rather than give you a heap full of cash. But since I vended this, I'm going to keep the cash. So we're, instead of having that check to be sent, we're going to type in the $730 and what was it? 51 cents. So 731.50. Did I type that wrong? 730.51. Now we're evened out. There's no check to be sent whatsoever. Let's move to the other side. So there's two options when dealing with taxes. The venue is either going to keep it themselves and report on it. If they do, that's on them. You're free in the clear if they decide to keep the taxes because you'll have this signed paperwork at the end of the night if there's ever an audit. Or you, the band, is going to retain the tax and then eventually have to pay it when they do taxes. Let's say the band that I'm working for is retaining the tax. We've already determined that the tax for the show over here on this line is $542.94. So you're going to type in $542.94 right there. And as you can probably start to see on the bottom of that red number, there's been a cash short and over number this whole time. We'll get to that here in a second, but... So you get down to the last couple things here. We've got our half sales, crew sales, and withheld credit card fees. Um, the half sale, remember we had a cool fan we gave a t-shirt to. The half sale is $12.50. They probably gave us $13 because we don't want to deal with actual change. And then we gave a cool crew person a uh, cost on a shirt for 6 bucks. And then we're obviously going to withhold our own credit card fee, which was the $227 from over here, because it was our band's credit card machine. We are withholding that fee. Now you get to your last part here. It says total cash due from show. That is the number of cash that you should have on hand if everything went perfect. That's, you know, because we had a lot of credit card sales, so we're not going to have that cash, but that number should be what's in your like little bank till or cash box or whatever you have. So that's your reference number. Then the last thing you're going to do at the show at the end of the night, you're going to actually count how much cash you have in your hand. Now, let's be honest here. Sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes math is wrong or somebody drops something or whatever, sometimes you're going to be over or under. Shit happens. It's a lot of merch companies that I've worked for give you a certain range that as long as you're like within like, you know, 50 bucks or something like that, it's totally cool. Nobody cares. This says we should have $1,519.15 on hand. But let's say when I counted, I only had $1,505 on me. Well, that's what we have. So let's put it in. $1,505. And then that tells us right there, we're short $14. However that happened, it's probably irrelevant unless your merchandise manager is stealing from you, but that's a good thing to have so that a band can see like, why were we this short? Or, Hey, we're right on tonight. Awesome. Now, your last couple things that I've built into this sheet that a lot of other people's don't have. This is just me being really particular. Total cost of goods, that takes all of the sales we made throughout the night and multiplies by that cost of goods. That's how much it cost to make the merch that we sold at that show tonight. So if you take that out of your show net sales, that gives your total profit to the band after the cost of goods and everything. That band made three thousand six hundred and five dollars that night it's a lot different from the nine thousand that we started with in gross sales so really when you're going to a show as a fan you gotta think bands are making nowhere near as much as their actual sales are doing because again really quick to throw you through 
We had a gross sales of $9,230, but then we had to pay $542 in tax. Then we had to pay $2,000 or sorry, $227 in a credit card fee. Then we had to give a $1,500 of it in a fee to the venue. And then another $111 of it to the venue for music. And then because our band had a merchandise vendor fee, which is myself and the person that vended, it's another $400 that comes out. So after you start taking out cost of goods and all the fees that the bands are paying for everything, your band that night made $3,600. Not as much as a lot of people would think. So I actually do hope that there's a lot of people watching this video that are just fans and not bands or merchandise managers. Our last box right here is if there was a check that needed to be sent. So again, if we zeroed that out and a company was vending for us and it was like check to be sent $730, you put the information on there where you need that to be sent. So make the check payable too. If it's not the band's name, if they have a different um, business name or if it is a merchandise company, you would put that there. You'd put in the name, the address, the phone number, all that stuff. But we didn't deal with any of that. So if you are using this sheet at any time, you can auto populate that. On the bottom, we have our signatures and you absolutely should be doing this. I know there's a lot of merchandise managers out there that don't get stuff signed. I am kind of old school. I prefer a paper trail of everything. So what I would do here is under band rep, you type your name under phone number. You put in your phone number. I'm not going to give you guys my phone number, so we'll do that. And then whoever you're settling with, you put their name. We'll just say, I don't know. Biff Jones, that's our venue person that we were working with that day. And then you type in his phone number. The last thing I would do at the end of the night is print this entire sheet. Yes, I have a printer on the road with me when I do merchandise. Um, back in the day when I was doing it, I would highly recommend the Canon IP110. It's a small printer, smaller than a shoebox. It's Bluetooth. It's great. I would print this sheet out. I would probably do it in black and white to save ink. And then I would sign it. They would sign it. And I would do multiple copies. So I have a copy for my records. And then I would give them a copy just in case they needed it. Now, whatever that venue rep does with it, throws it away, puts it in a filing cabinet somewhere. Not my problem. I've given it to them signed. I have a copy of it for myself. So. We see our numbers here, and then if we go back to our first tab on our overview, everything auto-populated. It's fucking magic, dude. We were in Chicago. We had gross sales of $9,230, and then our per head number. That takes the, I forgot to go back to that. So that takes our 871 people that were at the venue, and it shows what dollar amount per head. That means from those 871 people that were there, they average spending 10 bucks a person on merchandise. Gives us our tax, credit card fee, adjusted gross sales, the haul or vend that we paid out, the show net, the half sales, the crew sales, the cost of goods, and then your band's profit right there at the end. You can also see on the bottom, that's going to populate as well. It's going to add everything up. So at the end of the month or a tour, you can see exactly what you've made. So there is one show. Hopefully have I've explained that okay. So for setting up another show, we're moving on to the next day. The thing that you're going to want to do to make it easy for yourself is go to your ending inventory from the day before. We're going to copy all of our inventory out numbers, not that bottom number because that's an auto-populated one. You're going to copy them. You're going to go to your next day and you're going to paste them in. But what you're going to need to do is just paste the numbers because if you paste, if you paste what we just copied, you're going to get that because all of those ending inventory numbers are an auto populate column from all of our numbers. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click paste options and just paste values. That's it. And then there's your inventory start. Granted, you haven't added anything or removed anything or something from the night before. And then you would do the same thing for the other columns too. Just copy, move to your next show, and then you're going to paste the numbers and then do the same for music. And boom, you've got your inventory for your next day all ready to go.
One of the things I forgot to mention on this is that this is a completely blank merchandise sheet, which means some of this isn't going to auto populate. There is going to be some copy and pasting that you're going to have to do at the start of a tour. So I already started doing it on the day two. You can see I've copy and pasted in our tour sizes and you know stuff like that, but the sale prices aren't in there. Neither are the cost of goods prices. So normally what I would do is after I have all that stuff built in at the start of a tour and I haven't done a show yet, I would just copy and paste that through all of these again, just to make it easy. Or if you just want to copy and paste every day, it only takes a couple minutes, but there's a lot of different ways you could do this. It's all dependent on you, how you want to do it. But as we can see, I started doing our second show, just throwing stuff in there. So if we just copy and paste some, you know, sale price numbers and, and cost of goods numbers like this, um, it gives us our, our sales. You know, I put in 12 of each size, just the reason that I'm doing this is just to show you how the overview populates. So if you go over to our second show, it's auto populated there and then it gives, it auto populates all this. It's a really cool sheet. It works really well. You can go through 31 days like I've showed you guys, but hopefully this showed you guys how to at least do one full show and then you can figure out how to go as you want to. And like I've said, feel free to use it any way that you want to. And then one last important thing I guess would make sense is that if you ever got a shipment of new merchandise out on the road with you, you could just add them into your starting inventory at some place. So let's say at our second show, we got a hundred of each new size for our tour shirt. Cause they're going to do well for the tour. We can just add a hundred to all of these numbers And as you can see, it's going to auto populate our ending inventory. So this is a good way to keep track of your inventory throughout an entire tour. And again, you can keep an eye on the percentage of sales and see what's selling really well. And that'll give you a good idea of what you should reorder and what's going to be the good seller for you guys on tour. But hopefully that was informative and answered a lot of questions for people. I got to be honest, it's weird trying to explain in this kind of stuff in depth to a camera that's going to be a video later. I'm really good at this stuff if I'm in the moment with somebody or if we were on stream where people were able to ask questions and stuff like that. I'd probably cover more than I could in this video, but hopefully this is a good start. If there are any bands out there that want to use this sheet as a template and make your own changes or even just to see how formulas work because while you're on Excel, you can click on a box and it'll show you the formula of how things were used. That's how I learned how to do this stuff. I used other merch sheets that people shared with me so I could see what kind of formulas and cool stuff they did. And then I built my own, but I really hope this does help. And if anybody has any questions about any kind of this stuff, any kind of this stuff, if anybody has any questions about any of this that we covered in the video, drop them in the comments, shoot me a question anywhere. I'll be happy to answer this stuff because again, until I edit this video, I don't know how well I explained this. I hope I did a good job. But this is kind of fun. I enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed breaking this down. And again, you're free to use it at the link. If you have any questions, let me know. And if any bands or any merchandise managers do use this on the road, drop me a comment. Let me know. I'd be curious to see if this did help you while you were on tour. But if you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps in some way at all because that's all I really want to do here. I just want to get some knowledge out and possibly help a band or two that's on the road that just wasn't doing something like this before. And again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will be happy to answer everything. But that's it for me, man. I'm on a ton of different social media. If anybody wants to connect in that way, I'll throw links in the description of this video. My handle on everything is at tank the tech and wherever you are in the world, be safe, be kind to each other. And I'll be back very soon with another video.